welcome back to the tea room it's time for tea with tamara and today we are in the kitchen and i am going to be sharing a very 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 special recipe with you all today i am sharing my family's jamaican easter bun recipe with all of you and i am so excited now i have to let you know i had to speak to the elder and get permission to share this so you need to know that if you're on this channel and you're watching this recipe, this is a secret family recipe. It's not that secret, but it is a family recipe that we all cherish and love. And so you should feel very special that I was allowed and given permission to share it with you all. So let's get started in today's video. We are, I have everything prepped. So I'm going to walk you through all the steps and don't forget to check the description box below because I'll have the recipe in the description box below so that you can refer to that when you decide to make your Jamaican Easter bun. Okay, so starting off in my big, big bowl, you see how big this bowl is? You need a big bowl like this. In here, I have three cups of all-purpose flour already measured out. To that, I'm going to add two cups of just plain white sugar. And then I'm going to add three teaspoons of baking powder, not baking soda, baking powder. That's what I have in this little cup here. So what I'm doing is I'm putting all of my dry ingredients in the bowl. And then in this little bowl here, I have my spice mix. So what is my spice mix? My spice mix is made up of cinnamon, ginger, ground clove and nutmeg. I put one tablespoon of cinnamon, one tablespoon of ginger, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and a quarter teaspoon of clove. Now let me caution you, clove is very strong. If you don't like a lot of clovey taste, nutmeg is too as well. I would tell you less is more, okay? Because it's super, super, super strong and potent. I figured out that for my family, we go with a quarter of a teaspoon of the clove and the nutmeg each, and the rest will be one tablespoon of your cinnamon and your ginger. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add that to our bowl. So that is that. And then lastly, we're adding a pinch of salt. Okay, I know I have the same question too. What is a pinch of salt? I don't know y'all, I don't know what a pinch of salt is. A pinch of salt is a pinch of salt. So what I usually do is I just measure it out in my hand and maybe a quarter of a teaspoon, I don't know. I just literally a pinch or two or maybe the whole thing, okay? Why are we putting salt in it? The salt is gonna help bring out the flavor of all the spices that we just put in and all the other ingredients that we're going to put into our bowl. So what comes next? We're going to whisk this all together like so. See, we're just gonna whisk our dry ingredients and I'm making this for my family so it's okay if I breathe over it, okay? Don't y'all come for me in the comments. But this is what your dry ingredients should look like. All right, now that that's nicely mixed and smelling good, the thing about clove and cinnamon and nutmeg and ginger is it smells so aromatic and just warm and cozy. So that's smelling good. All right, now what I'm going to do is prepare my wet ingredients. So I have a measuring cup. You're gonna need uh, not as big as this one, but the reason why I like this one is because, I don't know if you all can see, it has all the broken down measurements. So I'm gonna need one and a quarter cups of liquid. And by liquid, I mean a little bit of this Guinea stout. Now let me tell y'all, do not try to do this recipe without this. This is one of the most important ingredients to this recipe. You have to have exactly this one. This is the Guinness Extra Stout, okay? This one, check the label. I will put it down in the description box, but I want you to see what the bottle looks like so you know. This is the stout that you need. You're not gonna need a lot of it, but you are going to need it. You're also gonna need some milk, 
okay? You can use whole milk, you can use 2%. I'm using 2% lactate-free milk because, you know. Um, <laughs> but what we're gonna do, we need one and a quarter liquid total. So how are we gonna break this up? What I do, which is easy for me, is I just do a half a cup of stout and then a half a cup of milk and then a little bit more of stout and a little bit more of milk until I get to the one and one quarter cup measurement on my measuring cup. So I'm gonna pour that in here now. And I start with the stout because it's kind of like a beer. And it does get a little foamy. So if you wanna prevent it from foaming too much, you can open your bottle and kind of let it breathe a little bit before you pour it into your measuring cup. So I've already got a half a cup. Now I'm gonna pour the other half cup of milk. Okay, so right now I'm at one cup of liquid. Now I'm gonna come back with my stout and I'm just gonna pour just a little bit until I get almost to the quarter cup line, but not quite, just like so. And then gonna finish it off with my milk. All right, so I've got my one and one quarter cup of liquid right here. This is what it looks like, okay? It looks like coffee. It's not coffee, you cannot use coffee. The rest of this, if you're making more than one batch, you can you can actually do two batches of buns with this. This recipe is gonna yield you two small buns. So if you wanted to double it, you could use this and it would do, it would give you four small buns or two or three large, larger size buns. I'll show you my pan in, in a minute here, but don't throw this away or you could drink it. It's daytime, so I'm not gonna drink it. <laughs> All right, to my one and one quarter cup liquid, I'm going to add one beaten egg, one large beaten egg. Gonna pour that in there. Okay. I'm also gonna add about one and a half tablespoons of vanilla extract. And here's another important ingredient. This is called browning sauce. And in the Caribbean, we use it for cakes, gravies, and stews. And it is, you see that rich, dark, molasses looking color? It's kind of like caramelized sugar. It gives the bun its unique dark color. So you want to have this. Now this I live in Southern California. If you are in Florida, you can go to any Jamaican grocery store and find this. If you are in Southern California where I live, where they have no Jamaican store, you're gonna have to order this on Amazon. You can find this on Amazon as well as one of the other ingredients that I'm gonna show you coming up here shortly. But definitely you wanna have this. Now, I will tell you, there is not a measurement for this. For this, I'm gonna show y'all what it looks like. I'm just gonna pour to my desired color. This is where the old school baking comes in. You know your mother's recipes when you call your mother or your mother-in-law or your auntie or your grandmother and you say, Grandma, how many tablespoons of so-and-so? And they're like, I don't know, just till it looks right. I don't know, just till it tastes right. This is one of those ingredients. You pour until the desired color. Now remember, I said the bun has a very unique, dark, rich, dark, kind of like mahogany color to it, right? That's kind of like the trademark of Easter bun, right? It's the color as well as the fruits. I'm making a whole mess here. So look how that kind of darkened up our liquid. We're gonna start with this color as the base. So pay attention to what that color looks like. You want it to look like this. Now, to our dry ingredients, we're gonna go ahead and add our liquid. You're gonna need a big spoon like this. Don't use a metal spoon, that is not gonna work. You want a big spoon, thick like this. Why? This batter 
is very doughy almost like, okay? It's hard to mix and you're gonna need your elbow grease. So you wanna get a sturdy, sturdy spoon to mix with, okay? So I'm gonna make a little well in my dry ingredients. And I wish I could bring my camera down, but we're not rolling like that yet. So I'll show you what it looks like as I start to mix. And we're gonna pour a little bit of our liquid. I'm gonna lift my bowl up so you can see. Do you see how I made that well right there? We're gonna pour our liquid in there and we're gonna start stirring our batter together. So you guys, I remember my mother-in-law telling me about this recipe and I remember making it with her. And when I first saw her make it, of course I already knew about eating it. I grew up on Easter bun, right? It's like a staple in Jamaican homes, okay? Um, when I saw her make it, I was very intimidated about doing it because it just seemed so involved. But what I didn't realize the first time that she was making it is that she was doing a batch that was like not just one batch. She doubles and triples her batches when she makes them because she makes several at a time. But she's such an amazing baker that it's all up here. She does not work from a recipe like I need to. <laughs> she doesn't do that. She just knows what goes in it and she does it. It's like second nature to her. And her buns are amazing. So I really cannot take any credit for this. This is all taught to me by my mother-in-law. And the first time that I made it, you better believe I had her on FaceTime consulting because I don't know, but I know now, and now I can share it with you guys. All right, so I am getting my mixture together. I'll show you what it looks like. You see that? It looks like, almost like a soft cookie dough or gingerbread. Mm, smells so good too. All right, so we wanna incorporate every single drop of flour that is in this bowl and it is a great arm workout okay it is really you gotta really hold your bowl too okay all right i'll tell y'all a joke i tried to mix it with one of these mm -mm. no y'all Please tell me why my spatula broke in half and fell in the batter. I had to go digging through the batter for the other half of the spatula because it broke. <laughs> but it is handy to scrape your spoon off. So keep one of those nearby you, but just don't try to mix your batter. And what I like to do with this is kind of scrape the sides down. So I make sure that everything that I put in this bowl is incorporated into this batter. Just like so. Y'all, it's a workout. I'm a little bit out of breath. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, that's, you gotta really put your back into it, as they say. All right, so here is what my mixture looks like. You see how stiff that is? It's like brownie batter, it's like cookie batter, a very soft cookie. This is what you wanna look for, okay? And it smells delicious. All right, next we're going to add our fruits. So I have some raisins here and I have the Paradise Holiday Fruit Mix. Okay, this looks like the fruits that go in like a Christmas fruit cake, right? but this is another important, crucial ingredient to Jamaican Easter bun. If you can't find these or you don't like the taste of these, you can also add some diced maraschino cherries and raisins and you'll just be fine, okay? I, I love this stuff. I don't know why, but when I taste this, it brings me back to my childhood. Um, I can't really describe the taste. To you it's 
it's just dyed pieces of fruit and peel and they're candied. So they're kind of sweet, but once you add it into the batter, it does something to your batter. This is another one here. I'll show you what it looks like. You see that? That's what it looks like. You see that cherry on the side there? Um, it looks, it, it um, looks like almost like stained window glass and there's different fruits in here. I don't know exactly what, but it's good. Okay, this is also another one of those things where I don't measure, I just kind of eyeball it. So I would tell you for this, you add this particular ingredient to your liking, however much or however little you want to put in there, it's all up to you. I kind of go ham with it because I like it. And then we're going to also add some raisins and I just kind of massage them get them loose because they can sometimes stick together and I sprinkle that in that's about right I'll show you my bowl don't worry all right that's what it looks like okay and lastly we're going to do two tablespoons of melted butter I use salted you could use unsalted um, I use salted it's fine it doesn't Add that much more salt to your mixture, but you wanna make sure you get all the butter in there. Okay. And now we're gonna mix again. What the butter does is it kind of loosens up your batter just a little bit and Kind of like just smooths it out some. It's like magic. And when I tell you, it already smells delicious. All right, so make sure you get all your bits and pieces of fruits and raisins equally distributed throughout the batter because you don't want that to clump. They kind of come out clumpy, so you want to make sure that they're all broken up and evenly distributed in your batter and this is what your batter should look like okay now at this point if you want a darker bun you could add a little bit more of the browning sauce which i'm just going to put just a little bit more and this stuff is very runny so be careful when you are pouring it in, but make sure that the browning you get has some type of consistency to it. It should not be like water. It should be more like a corn syrup consistency, okay? So I'm just gonna mix this in here. Y'all, I feel like I'm about to bust into a sweat and my daughter is about to walk through that door because she's home from school. So if you hear any background noise, I am home. I'm a stay at home mom. The baby is napping right across from me in her pack and play. And I'm surprised she has not woken up yet, but actually relieved so that I could get this video out to you guys. All right, so here we are. Now that's a nice rich, brown color it looks like chocolate it's not chocolate now what we're going to do is put our mixture into our loaf pans i have two small loaf pans here well greased and floured i used cooking spray and then i put some flour in it you can use the baking spray you can use butter and cooking spray and then the flour the, my, the main point is to make sure that your pan is well greased and floured so that when your buns come out of the oven, they're not sticking to the pan because you want to kind of take them out of the pan relatively quickly. All right, so I am going to scrape my spoon off and show you how I get this super thick batter into those pans because if you can tell, I am out of breath, y'all. 
Woo! That was a lot of work mixing that stuff, okay? It's, it's, it's thick. It's very thick and stiff. <laughs> I use another measuring cup like this. This is a two cup measuring cup, plastic. I use that to transfer my batter into the pans. Why? Because I'm not about to lift this big old bowl and try to scoop batter in. It's just easier if I do it this way, okay? So I kind of fill my cup up like so, and then I use my spatula to help me pour it into the pan like so which i know y'all can't see what i'm doing i'll try to move things around but don't worry i'll show you once i'm done <sighs> all right so in order to make sure that both of my pans get equal amounts of batter i kind of take turns going back and forth filling each pan so we just did this pan. This is what it looks like. And now I'm gonna scoop again and relatively get the same, about the same amount that I did. Sorry guys, I'm out of view with my other pan this much. And I'm gonna put it in the second pan. And this is where it gets a little messy, but that's okay, we're in the kitchen. That's what baking and cooking is all about. You make a mess sometimes. That's what soap and water is for, okay? If you make a mess, just wipe your hands off. It's not a big deal. And you wanna take that spatula and really scoop out the batter from out of the cup so that you make sure everything goes into your baking pan. Okay, so now at this point, I am going to kind of scrape my bowl down. Let me move myself over a little bit. I keep going out of frame, sorry guys. I'm gonna scrape my bowl down and get as much of that batter off the sides of my pan, my mixing bowl. And if you're wondering why I don't have a Jamaican accent is because I am twanging right now. But if I was at home with my family, I probably would be chatting the patois. And I'm not born in Jamaica. So my mother is from Jamaica and my dad was from Trinidad, but I grew up with Jamaican culture in a very fully 100% Jamaican household. So I know how to chat the patois. I me know how to cook the food, and of course, me know how to yam it. <laughs> but yeah, so for all intents and purposes, I consider myself Caribbean American. That is how I live, move, and breathe in this world. But me also know how to twat. So that is why you don't detect much of an accent. It's because I know how to turn it on and off. I believe that's called code switching. Uh, I can't with these terms these days. Just be who you are. I mean, in my house, I, I go back and forth between Patois and, you know, proper English. My girls, understand patois but they don't know how to speak it and part of that is because when i was trying to teach them they felt silly because it didn't sound the same as me or their dad and so they just were shy to learn i learned to speak patois because i spent most of my childhood summers in jamaica so Growing up, my mother would send me to Jamaica for the summer. So I spent two and a half months in Jamaica every summer from the age of six to 11. Living in Jamaica, um, my grandparents used to live 
in Mandeville and I would go to their house and they would take me to church and sometimes it was very boring because those of you who are from Jamaica back in the 80s Mandeville didn't have nothing um, they were excited when they got their first library <laughs> and that was what entertained me so what I used to do was videotape all the shows that used to come on on TV like the Cosby show and cartoons and things like that I would tape them on the VHS tape and then we would pack them in our clothes and roll them up in our clothes so they wouldn't get messed up going through the x-ray machine and watch the videos in the daytime in Jamaica because they would turn the electricity off well not the electricity but the TV station would go off the air at a certain time in the day so it only came on in the morning and then it would be off for several hours and then it would come back on in the evening so I wasn't used to that growing up in America I was like what is this what is that your TV is off what am I gonna do don't worry my grandmother found things for us to do like there was no shortage of things for us to do at grandma's house whether it was cleaning the windows or shining the carport with the coconut brush or dusting or shining her silver or polishing her shoes she made sure we had something to do that was constructive right because how dare you be on summer vacation and just sit on idle right that was my grandmother's philosophy all right so i've gotten my pan pretty much scraped of all the batter that I can get up with this spatula and I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to show you now this is what it looks like in the pan what I'm going to do is bang it on the counter to release any air All right, and this is what it should look like in your baking pan. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. I'll be right back. All right, so what I forgot to mention to you at the top of this video is you wanna make sure you preheat your oven, which I already did. You're gonna preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You're also gonna to wanna to put a water bath on the bottom shelf of your oven. And the reason for this is so that the bun doesn't dry out as it's baking, because we want our bun to be moist. Now, when this is done baking, you should get a very bread-like texture of a product. It's not gonna be cake-like, it's gonna be more like a, a stiff bread, but it should be very moist inside and delicious and aromatic and just yummy, 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 and just, ooh, wait, you'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna put these in my oven. I already had my water bath in there. I'm gonna set these on the top shelf. If you have more than two, you can just line them up on your top shelf, however many you can fit into your oven, and then you're going to set your timer for about one hour. Now, I'm in Southern California, and I noticed that my buns were not quite ready within the hour, so I had to add an extra 15 to 20 minutes or so. This is crucial, you wanna make sure that at the hour mark, you check your bun with a toothpick. If the toothpick comes out wet or looking still like the brownie batter, it's not done yet. You wanna put it back in the oven, set your timer for between 15 to 20 minutes, but make sure you keep checking to make sure that it doesn't overbake because we don't want a dry bun. We want a moist bun. We want it to be cooked all the way through, but we don't want it to dry out, okay? So once your toothpick comes out clean, meaning there are no crumbs on it, there's absolutely nothing on the, the toothpick, 
it's time to take the buns out of the oven and onto a cooling rack to allow them to cool. So what I'm gonna do at this point, I'm gonna stop the video, I'm gonna clean up, and then I'll come back when our buns are ready to come out of the oven, okay? Stay tuned. <laughs> 